Hi everyone, Dave here at East Rose Bud Fly and Tackle. Welcome. Today I'm going to tie a spinner pattern for you. Now your typical spinner pattern like this lies flush in the surface film. I like to use a ring eye hook for this. There are a lot of different body materials you can use for a spinner. This happens to be a biot. You can also use dubbing like I have on this spinner. I'm going to actually tie a Compara spinner. As you can see with this spinner, there's a little post material. The problem with spinners is they lie so flush in the surface film that they're almost impossible to see. Now, I'm not going to tell you that spinners are going to come into your fishing repertoire daily. Probably not. Spinners most often occur late in the day or if it's been a really, really hot day, sometimes in the morning. But as Dave Whitlock is fond of saying, whatever the trout are feeding on at that time is the most important fly to have. The nice thing about a rusty spinner, a spinner with a rusty colored body, is that many mayflies in the spinner stage have a rusty colored body. That includes blue-winged olives, PMDs, flavs, mahogany duns, march browns, and green drakes. And by simply changing the color of the body, you can also imitate trichos, calabatus, etc., etc. And different sizes of spinners will cover those different mayflies. So I'll show you how to tie a compare spinner. This is actually a Kelly Gallup pattern. I think most people associate Kelly's fame with all of his fantastic streamer patterns, but it wasn't always so. Kelly lived in the upper Midwest and fished the Michigan streams and did a lot of fishing with mayflies. And his first book, which was Cripples and Spinners, published in 2001, describes not only this spinner pattern, but many others as well. So he is a very well-rounded tire. Now the problem that I see with most commercially tied thinner spinners is the wing is simply too heavy. If you look at a spinner wing in cross section, it almost looks like a waffle iron. The veins themselves protrude down into the surface. The wing film itself is slightly above the veins. So it creates a very prismatic effect. The veins or the wings themselves can trap tiny air bubbles underneath them. If you want to see what this effect looks like, spray a light mist of water or snow on the top of your cell phone. And you'll see that each one of those droplets forms a prism. And from underneath, these spinner wings really shine. And that is the key trigger for trout is the, the wings. So we don't want them overly dense. We don't want them opaque. We want them transparent or at least translucent. Now you can tie this again in many different ways. This is a size 16 ring-eyed hook. I'm using Vivas 10 aught thread. I'm going to start my thread at about the 70% point. That's where I'm going to end up tying in my post. And we'll wrap a nice smooth thread base. Now, as you see here, I'm leaving my tag end of thread long. This is to help split the tails. If you're tying a three-tailed spinner, like this one, simply cut off a three or four inch section of thread before you tie, and you can use that to split the tails. I'm just using some white micro fibets. I really like fibets for spinner patterns. You can use CDL, but it's difficult to split it and make it look nice. So unfortunately, these fibets don't stack worth a darn, but they do slide against each other so you can even them up. Spinner tails are typically one and a half to up to two times shank length. So they're very long. So I'm going to measure this to be about one and a half hook shanks. I have the tips underneath my fingers slanted at about a 45 degree angle. Make one soft wrap on top. A second wrap, bring it up tight and then down. That rolls this material on top of the hook. Another couple of wraps to make sure I have it secure. Now with this single thread, all I'm going to do is splay these tails a little bit and bring the thread up between them. And this is a really fast and easy way to split these tails. If you're using three tails and you would use that loop of thread around the hook shank here, pull it up so that your middle tail is within the loop 
and it spreads all three tails very nicely. So we'll get that thread where I want it. Simply use thread pressure. Kind of manipulate it here to get these tails spread the way you want. And in a couple of wraps of tight thread to secure them. Now at about the halfway point, I'll go ahead and cut off the butt ends of this tail. All right, now Kelly does not give instructions on how to tie the compare spinner in his book. So I am just devising my own method. Kelly, if you see this and you disagree, I would appreciate any comments. Now for the wings, I'm just using some Sparkle Emerger yarn, clear. I prefer that for the wings. And I'm only using about a half of a strand. So you see there's not a lot there. The trick is, is to keep this wing sparse. I'm tying it in overly long so that I can trim it later. Simply going to hold it about the middle, again at the 70% point, and X wrap it in. A couple of X wraps to hold that firmly. Then I'm going to come just forward of the wing and tie in my bit of post material. This particular one has pink McFlylon. It's not the only material to use. I'm going to use some of this Parapost wing. It's very bright. Strip off a few of these fibers. It's just a little heavy as it comes from the package for this size fly. And again, what we want is just a little bit of visibility to help see these spinners when they're lying in the surface film. Tie this in right in front of my wings. With a couple of good pinch wraps. And clip off the excess. Now for the abdomen, again, you can use a variety of materials. If you want to use just rust-colored dubbing, that works fine. I'm going to show you how to use one of our Polish quills, which is a stripped and dyed peacock quill. It takes for some careful handling. These quills are pretty tender. This is a brown one. They don't make an actual rust colored one, so I'm using a brown one. It does have one edge that's darker than the other, so we want to make sure that that edge is trailing so that we get that segmentation effect. They all have a little bit of hurl left. Trim that off. And I'm simply going to catch that right back at the tail butts. and tie it down. You can end up just at the back of my wing. Now when I use Polish quill, I use the lightest pair of hackle pliers I can find. I don't want the extra weight. These are pretty fragile, so I use this type of hackle plier. Again, make sure that you have the dark edge trailing much like a biot, you simply wrap it over, avoid that hook point. <laughs> Did I say they were fragile? All right. Well, it's good for you to know I make mistakes too. So we'll unwind that. And we'll do it again. Again, a nice soft wrap. Get it down. And a nice smooth thread wrap. We want to keep this body nice and thin and trim, just like the real deal. If you're dubbing, keep that in mind as well. Keep it very, very thin. Try this one more time. Okay, 
and bring it out slightly away from you to wrap it. And wrap it with slightly overwrapping turns so that that segmentation, mayfly spinner bodies are very, very markedly segmented and almost transparent. A good thing for us that most of them are this rusty color. Wrap it up right to where my thread is hanging. And two thread wraps tie it down. Like on all small flies, every thread wrap has a placement and a purpose. You don't use five thread wraps or one or two will do. Now to really highlight this body material, I like to use a little bit of the UV thin cement. I'll touch a little on there and then I use a bodkin to spread it. This not only makes it durable, but it really gives this fly a nice 3D effect. Make sure you have enough to cover. It doesn't take much. And then just a couple of seconds with the light. All right. Now all we need to do is finish up the thorax, separate those wings. I'm using a rust colored dry fly dubbing. This happens to be super fine. And as the name says, we want to keep it super fine. So. We're barely covering the thread here with dubbing. We don't need a lot and we don't need very much. And what I'm going to do here is use this dub thread to help separate and divide these wings. Build up a bit of a thorax here. Just X wrap over between your wings and then come in front of your post and make several tight wraps of dubbing right up against that post to stand it up and then you're right behind the eye. Now we finish this. Now spinner wings are the traditional length, typical shank length. I like to trim my post shorter than that. Again, this is supposed to be high vis, not a headlight. Bring your wing material up. You can use your scissors. Simply measure your shank length, transfer it to your wings, cut it off straight. So here we have a high vis, a Compara spinner, something you can actually see on the water. The wings are very light. They will trap air bubbles and they are translucent. So that to me is the idea of a good looking spinner. Give it a try and, and carry some rusty spinners in the typical sizes, 12, 14, 16, and 18. You'll be able to match the majority of the mayflies we have out here. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.